What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World Podcast. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Thursday Night Football, Week 9, NFL 2021, Jets and the Colts. I thought that this game would be a coming out party for Mike White. Unfortunately, we saw early in the game he was hurt. He was injured, man, and it, I really felt for the guy, man, because I already knew the Jets had a chance to win this game. And I don't really care for the Jets at all because I know, you know, looking at them, I never thought that they, you know, they were going to be decent this year. Uh, they've Even when they've had decent teams, they've still found a way to let people down. Uh, so I wasn't really like, oh, my God, you know, the Jets can be able to be, you know, be a decent team. But Mike White changed that, bro. Like, I watched him last week and I'm like, yo, this guy right here, he has potential. Even with the whole Zach Wilson injury, I completely forgot about Zach Wilson. I'm like, yo, this dude, Mike White, he might be the real deal. That injury, and then they bring in Josh Johnson, and I'm like, all right, you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, listen, all good things come to an end, but really fast in this case, you know what I'm saying? Because that guy, Josh, is trash, and he's been all over the NFL. I didn't even know he still played. That's what was so crazy about it. I had no idea that he still played. Now, you might look at the numbers like, oh my God, yo, g why are you not giving him any love? 27 to 41, 317 yards, three touchdowns, uh, you know, one interception. If you see how he generated those yards, you would understand a lot of, you know, check down passes, running back, running it like, dude, if he was that good, he wouldn't be a backup for all this time in the league. Like, dude, like it, I don't even want to go, go through that because people are going to make excuses for it. But the bottom line is Mike White started off very, very well, 95 yards and a touchdown. Um, the game was competitive. Um, and uh, you, you looked at it like, okay, this is going to be a real game. And then, you know, that's one of the major things that happens when quarterbacks are throwing the ball. They can't change any rules to where the guys are engaging because the game is so fast. And it's like a freak injury, forearm, whatever. They were trying to do a lot of different things to get the swelling down. But if you guys have ever been injured in like, you know, your forearm or any type of like arm, you know, arm area where your arm swells, it's very, very hard to stop that swelling immediately. And I already knew looking at what happened, he would not come back. Now, they listed him for questionable throughout the game, but I just knew he wasn't going to be able to come back. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate. And I was rooting for this young man, you know, because I like to see these guys come out and do, you know, play well when they have the opportunity, because a lot of these these Tom Brady stories, they're never able to come to fruition. You know, what if Drew Bledsoe never gets hurt? The dude was garbage. We knew he was garbage. Bill Belichick, the Patriots, everybody knew he was garbage. Bill Belichick was actually about to get fired, though, uh, throughout that time. But what I'm saying is, as unfortunate as it is, injuries give these other young players a chance to shine. And I really love getting that opportunity for those players to be able to shine. Whether you see if they're trash or not, or whatever it is, it's a beautiful opportunity. And you know, although the Jets are a terrible football team, I was riding for Mike White because I like to see that happen. It doesn't matter who the player is. I just like to see them get an opportunity. Jordan Love is gonna have an opportunity this weekend uh, with Aaron Rodgers being out. If he could ball out, maybe you know that changes the, the whole uh, thought process for the actual organization. Do I love Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback? Yes, I do, but I like to see the opportunities of these other players to go out and just shine because it's just a beautiful thing to see. When you take a look at everything that went on with the game, Elijah Moore, you know, Elijah Moore had seven receptions on eight targets. We had Ty Johnson. He had a touchdown. Uh, he had three targets, two receptions. There are a lot of things going on here. Um, I do believe that looking at the way the Jets played after, you know, Mike White was taken out of the game, I can tell you this much, right? They are, they're a formidable team with the right guy under center, bro, right guy. I'm gonna tell you this, look, I was very, very impressed with the way the game started because they looked like, even though their defense was gonna give up plays, they looked like they could compete with Mike White under center. I don't know if there's gonna be a controversy because look, if you look at it, right, he was on his path to probably throw for another 400. Let me know if you agree with that. Like he was definitely looking like it wasn't a fluke with the first game against his Colts defense and the Colts defense is not bad. So now once they figure out his injury, what do you do with Zach Wilson? I know what you do with Josh Johnson. You know, I don't know in your states when the trash come out or in your country when the trash comes out, um, but I would just put Josh Johnson out there for that, you know, for that pickup. So we're not worried about him. Zach Wilson and Mike White, that's going to be the situation that they're going to have to figure out what they're going to have to do. But I think that that's a very, very good situation for the Jets. But I was impressed. And that's hard coming for me when I'm watching a Jets football game with the way that Mike White looked before he was injured. Carson Wentz, 22 of 30, 272 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. But the star of the night was Jonathan Taylor. He can't be stopped, bro. You know what's weird about this? If you guys have a fantasy league, 
I didn't realize how good this guy was, Jonathan Taylor. You know, because I, I actually, um, I handle and coordinate a fantasy football team uh, for one of my friends. I think we're like, yeah, we're five and two right now. A five and three? I don't know what we are. Yeah, no, five and three. We lost the game last week because all our running backs were hurt. But it doesn't really matter. What I'm saying is, I've been watching this guy and like, I didn't know that, obviously we've seen signs of him being like very, very dominant, but I'm talking about a thorough throughout game where he's just continuously going over a buck 50 doing whatever he wants. Jonathan Taylor is the real deal. Um, Naheim is, I guess that's how you say it, Naheim Hines, he's pretty good as well, but I want you guys to understand why Carson Wentz has this luxury and why even late in the game he stayed in and was still throwing the ball. You have to watch the run. The Colts can run the football. They got a Hall of Fame guard, but like, dude, they, yo, people don't seem to understand how good guards are. Was that Quentin Nelson? Like, it, it's th this team. They they can do whatever they want with the play action because everything is generated off of that. So even though Car Carson Wentz may make bad decisions, like we saw last week, that offensive line is no flu. So he gets decent protection if he's smart enough to use it. But not only that, they can always have a decent run game because that O line is built like that. And then when you look at the fact that they have, a, dude, play action. Just look at Derrick Henry. I, I can't wait for you guys to see what the Titans are without Derrick Henry. When you have no fear for the run, it's the oldest thing in football. It's the oldest formula. Run the ball, create play action. And once they have to defend the run, it doesn't matter anymore. Nothing really matters. And that's pretty much what you got from this team. You know, they were able to dominate in the run game and the Jets don't know whether they're running, you know, pass, this, that. They're throwing, they're throwing trick passes on triple options for touchdowns. Like, it got really, really nasty. And um, like I said, with the Colts situation, I got, I don't think that, you know, Carson Wentz is going to be that guy right now. I don't even know what he is, guys, to be honest. Because sometimes I'm like, yo, go Carson, go Carson, and he'll do something stupid, like throw a screen pass right to the, de the defense and give him a touchdown. So I don't really know about it, but I, t I will tell you this. The Colts have the perfect formula for winning right now. They just do because they can run the football and they can create play action and they can throw it. Carson Wentz has a decent enough arm to be able to get that ball. He's a big boy, bro. 6'5", he, he got a big arm. He can do a lot of different things. So again, with the way that they're set up, is he the guy for the future? I would like to say that. But again, he's going to have to show that he's not making those very, very, you know, those really simplistic mistakes that you just shouldn't do. Uh, obviously, in this game, it was a blowout because Mike White got hurt. It was no game. But I want to see what he does in the more, you know, get, you know, the more uh, nip tuck close games. Can he make those clutch decisions to bring them the victory? And then I can make my decision. I want to thank you guys and girls for watching. Hopefully you're having a great day. Stay blessed. Until next time. One love, y'all.